because uh, we recently talked to a pre sufferer and uh, they invoked the transcendental argument in the form of something like, you know, if intelligibility, then God, intelligibility, therefore God. And then when we asked them to support or give an argument for the first premise, they said they have to get back to us. So that's kind of what we're talking about. And we're still waiting. Okay. Nathan just called my radio show today. That was enjoyable. He was complaining about uh, God in the Old Testament and what was good and what was bad. So it was enjoyable. Do you know of it. an argument for the first premise? State the first premise idea again. If intelligibility, then God. Intelligibility, therefore God, is the argument. Yeah, I, I could see why that would be uh, could be supported. Um, how to word it exactly right, I don't know. But, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have... Okay. Well, um, doesn't... Isn't this basically the foundation for the entire presuppositional argument? Yeah, it's, it does with transcendentals, universals, and you presuppose a Trinitarian God. And when you do, uh, conveniently, everything falls in place. And when you don't, things fall apart. Right, but in this argument, as presented, it's not just concluding that a Trinitarian God is the only thing that can exist. It's specifically the Christian God, correct? Trinitarian God is a necessary precondition for all intelligibility. That I would hold that and debate that, because with the Christian Trinitarian God, you have the one and the many, and you have the universal's particular uh, problem uh, that is can be solved in Trinitarianism. Okay, right, but the Christian God being triune is one amongst many attributes which are essential. Correct. Trinitarian God. Excuse me. To the Christian Trinitarian God? To the Christian God. Yeah, the Trinity is what he is. Yeah. No, the Christian God has many essential qualities. Um, you keep repeating, repeating triune, the Trinitarian God. That's one of many properties of the Christian God, right, yeah. that are essential. These are necessary properties, right? Like yes. omnipotence is also another one, right? So yeah. um, omnipotence, as, as Darth Dawkins would say, he would, he would list uh, triune nature, of course, um, benevolence, omniscience, um, always truth revealing. Uh, there's even more of them, right? These are all essential qualities of the Christian God, correct? Uh, I think you said omni something I didn't quite hear, so I don't know what you said. So but aside from that Standard one. Standard uh, omnis, omnipotent, omniscient, uh, omnibenevolent. Yeah, I don't say he's omnibenevolent. Okay, we can get rid of that one then. That's fine. But I know what you mean, the, the basic omnis, yeah. Uh -huh. Right, so when you say, yeah, yeah, the, tri the triune God, that's just one of many different qualities that are essential, right? So in the argument, in this transcendental argument, if intelligibility, or if you want to say if knowledge, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what you put in there. We'll just use intelligibility as a placeholder. If intelligibility, then God, right? And not just any God, the Christian God, and not just any, you know, just nebulous idea of the Christian God, a very particular idea of the Christian God with all of those essential qualities, right? You need to have all of those things, right, in order to have intelligibility, correct? Yeah, for now. Right, right. This is all pretty, pretty much standard stuff, but this is kind of like what we're asking about, you know, so I'm just, I mean, for me, I don't really see how it, I, I don't know what the argument is for that yet. And um, I mean, I know I won't hold you to like some kind of uh, you know on the spot, very rigorous academic formalization of what the argument is for why that particular God can only explain intelligibility or why you need that God for intelligibility. But I'd like to hear an attempt. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking though. Uh, an argument for premise one. An argument for what? If intelligibility, then the Christian God. Oh, oh, well, it's just was it Moses' opponents? If uh, A, then B, A, therefore B. Is that what's going on? Yeah, in this formalization, yes, that's correct. Right. So, 
if it is older than Christian God. I, I don't know. I, I, you're driving, huh? Be careful. Yeah, sorry. It's all right. No big deal. So I would just say that uh, without a Christian Trinitarian God, you can't justify anything. So you could say that it was like by a disjunctive syllogism that that is uh, necessarily true. The first premise. I'm not working it out here. I'm just kind of tired. But yeah, no, no, I'm not going to like, uh, I mean, I, look, full disclaimer. Yeah, you're just kind of like spitballing on the fly here. That's fine. Um, so the problem with just saying like, well, if there's no Christian God, you can't justify anything. Well, that's kind of another claim, but it seems kind of like you're making some kind of epistemic objection. You know what I mean? So that wouldn't really, I don't think that would really uh, justify that premise. Well, the very logical uh, assertion requires the assumption of universals, right? Uh, right? Maybe. I'm not. I'm not too familiar with this line of uh, like a, a rebuttal. But <clears throat> let me let me try and frame it like a little bit differently. Maybe it'll be a little bit more clear. Because I don't think we we probably don't really have to talk about universals. Because okay, so let's say we take all the qualities that we were talking about. You know, the omni properties. You don't like the omni benevolence, that's fine, we can get rid of that. But, you know, the triune nature, the always truth revealing, um, all the other stuff, right? Um, what if we take away always truth revealing? Now, it seems to be that you're committed that this new God concept, right, which is very similar to the Christian God, but um, undeniably not the Christian God. Because why? Because all those qualities are essential, necessary qualities of the Christian God. Right? This is this is definitely not the Christian God, because he's not always truth revealing. In fact, let's say that he lied once, ever, one time. So with that now, with that being said, why is it that, that why is it the case that with that God concept there can't be intelligibility? You mean if God lies, there can't be intelligibility? No, 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 no. Listen very carefully. He doesn't lie. He doesn't lie in plural, right? He lied once and will only ever lie once. In other words, he's not always truth revealing because he did lie once, but he'll never lie again. Wouldn't be the Christian God, so. Absolutely, what? exactly, exactly. So yeah, now, uh, yeah. So now, now you and I both agree that this concept we're talking about now is absolutely not the Christian God. However, in the transcendental argument, only the Christian God can account for intelligibility. Without the Christian God, you can't have intelligibility. So the question is, with this new concept of God, how is it the case, necessarily, that we can't have intelligibility if this God lied one time and will only ever lie one time and will never lie again? This incoherence is say that a being that has a nature consistent with itself would then violate its own truth, and so it would be inconsistent with itself as it's being coherent. No, it didn't. It's, its nature is not always truth revealing. In fact, its nature is to lie one time. So when that God concept of God lies one time, it is completely 100% in accord with the nature of its own being. So to lie once is to lie. So now you're saying Correct. lying is consistent with its nature. Up to lie once, yeah. It doesn't matter how many, it just lies consistent, otherwise you couldn't do it. How many it chooses to do is, is irrelevant. So now you're saying that there's a being that can purposely deceive. Yeah, it, it won't though. I mean, look, I mean, Jesus said that um, he was never going to flood the earth again, right? Jesus can't do it again. Just the same way, this person lied once, he can never lie again. How do you know? If you can lie once, you can lie more. You can be lying about not lying again. Well, that's going to go for any God, right? But look, we're just no, doing... No, not for the Christian God. <laughs> okay, fine. Look, it's just stipulated in the art, in the concept, right? You're, you're making an epistemic objection about a stipulation that I have, right? So I'm saying, let's analyze this concept. And your response is to say, let's not analyze that concept. But I would like to analyze my concept. Go ahead and analyze your concept about a God that can deceive. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't even don't... matter if it lied more than once. Hey, he's only ever lied once. He's not going to ever lie again, right? That's just How do you know a that? Stipulation. Look, it's, I'm just stipulating it, right? That's a possible concept of God. 
You're just making an epistemic objection. I'm saying, like, let's analyze this concept, and you're saying, let's not. Well, that's not being very open to the discussion. If you don't... It's like, it's like saying, let's hit it around the circle. I'm just, that's my proposition. Let's go with it. It doesn't make sense. If your being can lie... Around circle? Yeah. You mean a around square. Oh, sorry, you yeah. mean a sparse? Okay, gotcha. Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. So you're saying that this God can lie, but you're saying it only lied once. Yeah. Yeah, I find that just incoherent. What's the contradiction? A lie? What do you mean? A lie is a contradiction. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. When I, if I were to lie to you, I would be contradicting myself against the truth. Myself against it? You mean his self? Like, um, his nature is consistent with lying one time, so... It's no it violation of his nature. So how do you know it's not a violation of his nature to lie? You're just you're offering me incoherence. I just can't go with your system. It doesn't work. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, you can understand that um, I I'm not satisfied with that response. You know, I'm just just saying I'm it's not, incoherent and not detailing. Like, yeah, I, I did. I, I, I'm not saying you're, you're. I'm not satisfied with your presupposition that he can lie just once. So you're saying there's a being. That can be deceptive, consistent with its nature to deceive. Well, that's Islam who you're talking about, actually. The kind of Islam can be a deceiver. Yeah, so why does that mean we can't have intelligibility, though? Because how would you justify truth uh, on a being that can lie? That's just an epistemic concern. You asking me a question isn't going to, to answer why we can't have intelligibility. I just don't see how you can ground truth in a being that can lie. Well, that's just an argument from ignorance. Okay, whatever. I just don't see how you can ground truth in a being, which is the ultimate, who can be a deceiver, whose nature right, so, allows him to deceive, so which means you could not trust such a being, and you could never know ultimate truth because it might be deceiving you. Just to try and get out of it by saying you only lied once, how do you know that? Well, you're just saying it. So what you're doing is just proposing something that you made up that I don't find coherent, and then you want me to deal with your incoherence. So I don't find your premise satisfying at all. Yeah, so you're saying basically, I don't see how else it could be. I don't see how that could be, so therefore it's false. That's a classic argument from ignorance. No. Now, if it's gonna only... say, it's, it could be self-contradictory. Your being can be self-contradictory. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Hold on a second. I have one more objection because I, I listened to what you said. I just want time to say, to respond to you. So... Sounds to me like an argument from ignorance. Now, secondly, your second objection was something like, well, if it's the case that this God tells me something, well, if he tells me, you know, that this guy is blue or something like that, or, you know, the earth is round or something like that, how would I know that that's true or something like that? But you, going through that deliberation, you, thinking about, um, the sky being blue or the world being round is in fact you perceiving intelligibility, right? When you start pondering about the sky being blue, that is intelligibility. And so in your own rebuttal about how under this God concept there could be no intelligibility, you have invoked intelligibility. Hello? Yeah. How about this? So, would you agree that such a being that you're postulating would speak out of what's in him, not what's outside of him, what's in his nature, right? Are you asking me if this being that I'm proposing is consistent with his nature? Yeah. So it's consistent with his nature. So if it speaks out of its nature, then its nature permits lying, right? Uh, well, I said one time but yeah it's possible yeah okay so then it's nature is is lying a form of incoherence no it's not no so for something to be incoherent means it's not logical right uh yeah something like that so then it's logical to lie or to contradict yourself yeah well to contradict yourself hold on a sec what do you mean by he's contradicting himself because if he knows all things, he'd know what the truth was. And if he lied, he would be contradicting himself, knowing what the truth was. 
Oh, like if I if I say something like I'm currently on top of the Mount of Ever- Mount Everest, like I'm at the precipice of Mount Everest, have I like somehow broken the law of uncontradiction? Location not the same thing as truth. This God that you propose has all knowledge, right? Well, it's not true that I'm at the top of Mount Everest, though. You see. Does this God you propose have all knowledge? Yeah, sure. So then, if it were to lie, it would contradict its own knowledge. Contradict its own knowledge? I don't even know what that means. It would know something is true and then speak to the contrary of what it knows to be true, right? Yeah, yeah. So would you say then that is a contradiction? No. It's not a contradiction to speak uh, what is not true when you know what the truth is? Yeah, that's called a lie. Yeah, and so is a lie a contradiction against the truth? A contradiction against the truth? A lie is saying something that is not true intentionally. That's what a lie is. So if I say A is blue and A is also not blue, they cannot both be true in the same sense, in the same way. So one is true, the other is a contradiction to that truth, hence a lie, correct? You mean contrary to the truth? Yeah. Okay, you mean, yeah, it's, it's not true. true. Yeah. And so a lie is speaking some, lying is to speak something contrary to the truth that you know to believe to be true. Yeah. So then, yeah, so then your, God, is, yeah. your God would be offering a, a a contradictory uh, statement, a statement that's well, not I coherent. I the word contradictory. I, I'm not sure why that, that word is even in there. Because it's you're saying it's contradictory to the truth that he knows. So he's contradicting his own knowledge by saying something he knows is not consistent with his own knowledge. Uh, look, look, I just wouldn't say contradiction. I don't think it has any business being in there. I use the word contrary to, I, I use the word contrary to his knowledge, and you seem to be okay with that. So maybe that's okay. what you mean. Okay, let's go with contrary. So it speaks contrary to what it knows to be true. Yeah. Which means such a contrary ability is part of its nature. Yeah. So it speaks out of the essence of its own nature, which now is contrary to itself? No, its nature is that it can't lie. So it's perfectly in line with its own nature. And if it has all knowledge about what truth is and then it lies, then it's offering something in contradiction to what it knows to be true. So therefore, well, there's that word contradiction becomes, again. Do you yes, mean right. contradiction or contrary? Yes, contradiction. A contradiction of the truth. He's contradicting the truth, speaking against the truth, which could only occur out of its own nature, which what you're saying is part of his own nature is to contradict his own nature. No. Yes, because if his nature is true to know all truths, but also to not speak a truth, then he's contradicting what he knows himself to be. Because before anything exists, all that exists would be himself. That would mean eternally he would know that he's going to contradict what he knows to be true about himself, which means part of his nature allows for self-contradiction. It's not contradicting that, anything about himself, though. Yeah, his knowledge base. All actuality versus potentiality. All actuality would be his own nature. And he would know himself exhaustively. But all potentiality would be that which doesn't yet exist. So with his own actuality, so he would know like then. So somehow incoherent? Yeah. So if it's I an, say like I, if I say I'm ten foot tall and that's inconsistent with my nature, am I like yeah. an incoherent being that is like alive walking around and doing stuff? No, you're not omnipresent and omniscient and have all truth. But and, I have the relevant truth to to the analogy. Nope. And you speak out of your fallenness, so you can speak with incoherence. Now what you're saying is that this God who has all knowledge, all places, all can speak incoherently. Well, he can lie. Yeah, so you can speak incoherently. So your nature is fallen, as is mine, so we can speak incoherently. But if God is not fallen, then you're saying he'd be incoherent. But if he's fallen, which means he lies, then he's also incoherent with his own nature. I just don't think you're making any sense. Sorry. <clears throat> no offense taken, Matt. So if this God came to you and you knew he'd lied before and he said, hey, I got the winning lottery numbers for you, Matt, what would you say to him? I mean, lift First the of all, it's like 16, 12, 32, 45. So now you're saying an incoherent God comes to me and talks to me, which is against my worldview, the existence of any other gods, and you want me to entertain what is basically an incoherent scenario to help you out? I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Well, the concept is not incoherent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm done going in circles. Okie doke.
Well, anyway, you guys want to talk about anything else or I can bail? Whatever. So how's Darth been treating you guys lately? <laughs> he doesn't talk to us. Why not? Because he's afraid. Why? He's afraid? Yeah. What's he afraid of? Hard questions. Give me a hard question. The one I gave you. That's a pretty hard one. No, it wasn't, because it was incoherent. So give me a better question. Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe one's enough for today, Matt. One incoherent? Okay, that's all right. I'll give you one incoherent proposition a day. Anybody else in the room want to? See, I was going to come in and say the presuppositors have no argument and never will. I was going to ask, why would you presuppose that is true? Did anybody smile? Yeah. Are you in here an atheist? Is anyone in here an atheist? Is that what you asked? Yeah. I think we all are. Hey, I got a question for you guys. I'm a sex up atheist. Some are agnostic. That's true. Jay